Coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. Drones and weapons are a dangerous mix. The UAS for STEM 2019 Nationals. And a drone causes concern when it followed children home from school. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. The FAA is warning the general public that it's illegal to operate a drone with a dangerous weapon attached. Perhaps you've seen photos or videos of drones with dangerous items such as guns, flamethrowers, or knives attached to them. But that doesn't mean you should consider attaching any of these items to your drone. Doing so could result in significant harm to a person and to your bank account. Operating a drone with a dangerous weapon attached to it is a violation of Section 363 of the 2018 FAA Reauthorization Act. Operators are subject to civil penalties of up to $25,000 for each violation unless they have received specific authorization from the administrator of the FAA to conduct the operation. A dangerous weapon means any item that is used for or is readily capable of causing death or serious bodily injury. Operators should keep in mind federal regulations and statutes that generally govern drone operations still apply. Some state and federal criminal laws regarding weapons and hazardous materials may also apply to drone operators or manufacturers involved in certain operations. All right, now let's take a quick look at a few stories making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. It's time for today's Drone Minute. It was 57 seconds of aerospace history. A SpaceX drone being flown in accordance with regulations got spectacular footage of the final test flight of the SpaceX Starhopper test vehicle. The flight saw a planned maximum altitude of 500 feet, as well as a precision landing near the center of an adjacent landing pad. The Starhopper test was the last flight of this vehicle and was never intended to go to space, but instead serve as a partial test of a far more ambitious vehicle. AeroVironment announced its 2019 Quantix and AVDSS University collaboration project. The project's focus is to advance academic research, applications, and crop production practices to improve the future of farming through the use of UAS and advanced data analytics. Through the project, AeroVironment has donated 87 Quantix hybrid drone and AVDSS ecosystems to the agricultural departments of 35 universities throughout the U.S. The city of Prairie Village in Kansas has given initial approval to an ordinance prohibiting the use of drones over private property without the property owner's consent as well as imposing other restrictions. The Kansas City Star reports Mayor Eric Mickelson cast the tie-breaking vote moving the legislation forward. It will be up for a second vote in September. Concerns were first raised in the city about drones when someone flew a quadcopter over the annual jazz festival in Harmon Park back in 2017. It's almost time for the 2019 AMA Expo, which will be held November 1st through the 3rd at the Fairplex Exposition Complex in Pomona, California. Among the attractions for this year include a large display by model industry exhibitors, speakers and special guests, static model competitions, make and take, how-to seminars, an AMA member meeting, and much more. We'll have more information as we get a little closer to the festivities. Now back to the rest of the news. Congratulations to the McIntosh Aeronautics team of Peachtree City, Georgia on winning the UAS for STEM Nationals earlier this month. Coming in second place was the Sato Dragons team of Long Beach, California. And in third was the St. Mary Civil Air Patrol team of Hollywood, Maryland. And the Dewey O. Broberg Scholarship was given to Lucila Zarita. A total of 10 teams competed in the contest, which took place at the International Aeromodeling Center in Muncie, Indiana. 
UAS for STEM is a STEM-based organization for students grade 8 through 12 and is designed to encourage students to learn more about the small UAS phenomenon. The UAS for STEM challenge was conceived as an everything in one box concept. Each includes access to the UAS for STEM online ground school, online build series, Quadzilla quadcopter kit, Pixhawk autopilot with GPS, RC system, onboard camera, handheld video monitor, video transmitter, RC flight simulator, two batteries and one charger. Teams provide their own laptop to run the ground control station software. For more information about UAS for STEM, please visit UAS4STEM.org. Things got a little out of hand when Escalon, California police received a report of a drone following two boys as they walked home from school. The aircraft reportedly followed the boys for a short distance and came within a few feet of the boys before flying away. But the truth was the drone was being operated by another boy who was using it to look at a construction site with several of his friends. The boy's mother said the two walking from school waved at the drone, so her son flew it down near them in response. The mom has apologized for the concerns caused by her son and has taken his drone away. This story is just another example of a false alarm concerning drones. Even so, the police still say if anyone observes a drone being operated near a school or in an unsafe or suspicious way, they should notify the authorities. And that was our last story of the day. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the exciting hobby drone world, head over to modelaircraft.org. I'll see all of you right back here tomorrow to wrap up the week with an episode of Airborne Unlimited.